Hi guys, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Um, I wanted to talk today about mushrooms and um, their connection to vitamin D, the vitamin D content of mushrooms and how mushrooms are actually a very interesting food when it comes to uh, boosting vitamin D levels. Um, they're not a food that immediately comes to mind when you think of vitamin D. The food um, you know, that, that's traditionally thought of as being rich in vitamin D uh, is fish liver oil. Uh, and there are other foods that contain smaller amounts of vitamin D. Eggs contain vitamin D. Um, some milk is fortified with, with, with vitamin D. And then anything made with that milk is obviously going to have some vitamin D in it. But generally, foods are considered quite poor sources of vitamin D, except for fish liver oils. Uh, and fish liver oils were the traditional medicine that was given to people uh, with rickets or osteomalacia in order to be able to reverse vitamin D uh, deficiencies. Um, now this is where obviously sunlight exposure is the main route uh, that humans get their vitamin D from and we can produce uh, tens of thousands of IU of vitamin D every day from um, exposing our skin to, sun, uh, to UV light, to sunlight um, and when we do that there is a, a reaction that converts cholesterol to a form of vitamin D called vitamin D3 uh, which is also called cholecalciferol. Uh, and that's how we get our vitamin D. That cholecalciferol is subsequently metabolized um, to a compound called 2,5-hydroxyvitamin D3. Uh, and this is the active uh, biomarker of vitamin D in humans. And sunlight exposure is the main way that we are able to maintain our vitamin D levels. Now, the problem comes from the fact that many people in the world live in areas where they don't have access to year-round sunlight. Uh, if you live at the equator, fine, the sun uh, is overhead uh, for all of the year, pretty much overhead, and therefore you have access to sunlight and therefore vitamin D production and synthesis in your skin is not really a problem. And, and the diet, the dietary sources of vitamin D uh, are really not important. Um, but as, we, uh, as the latitude uh, increases and we go further north or south away from the equator, um, the, the reliance on the dietary aspect of vitamin D becomes more important because during you know the winter months uh, the sunlight is not strong enough to be able to allow us to synthesize vitamin D in our skin so therefore we need a dietary source of vitamin D and increasingly because foods are um, you know not great sources of vitamin D and also because uh, the foods that do contain vitamin D uh, are not the ones we eat regularly uh, there's not many people that eat uh, that consume fish liver oils on a daily basis unless you're taking a supplement and therefore uh, during the winter months our vitamin D levels do actually uh, drop considerably uh, and someone living in the United Kingdom for example uh, may, may suffer from a mild vitamin D insufficiency or actually a, a, a full deficiency um, towards the end of winter um, and this is where the recommendation to consume supplements has come from uh, I do recommend taking a vitamin D supplement during the winter if you live in a country where you don't have access um, to sunlight. Um, some beds will provide that sunlight. Some people don't want to go on some beds for various reasons. Um, and therefore, you know, supplements to a lot of people make sense. But I've always said, and a lot of nutritionists agree with me, that it's better to get your nutrients from food. I would always recommend that people try to get their nutrients from their food. And therefore, sources of vitamin D are of interest to me and other nutritionists and nutritional researchers um, because they are, um, you know, they can make, they may be able to sustain um, the, the, the levels of vitamin D during the winter without the need for supplements. Because there is always the danger that supplements will lead to um, toxicity. Um, foods generally contain slightly lower levels of vitamin D um, and I've always thought that taking uh, your vitamins from food is a safer way. Taking supplements um, could lead to toxicity. Um, there is a danger vitamin D is toxic at higher doses. I've not seen it myself uh, and studies that have looked at toxicity have given very high amounts of vitamin D throughout the winter for long periods of time and they don't show, people don't show toxicity um, symptoms but that doesn't mean uh, that it couldn't happen. So the interest in food is there for a reason. Um, and like I say, food sources are limited. But one source of food that is often overlooked is mushrooms. And mushrooms are actually quite a good source of the vitamin D2 uh, 
form of, of, of the vitamin, which is called ergocalciferol. Now, if we look at the way that mushrooms synthesize their vitamin D, it's very similar to the way that humans synthesize their vitamin D. Um, mushrooms synthesize ergocalciferol vitamin D2, and they synthesize it from plant sterols. Um, these, these are not all obviously fung uh, fungi mushrooms are not plants but it, you know ergo calciferol is 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 designated the plant form of vitamin d2 um it's a misnomer because it is present in mushrooms and mushrooms are not plants but uh, like plants mushrooms have sterols uh, in their tissues and they can convert these sterols into ergo calciferol um, and this ergo calciferol um, is able to be consumed by humans and when we consume ergocalciferol, we are able to produce um, ultimately 2,5-hydroxyvitamin D. But it's not the normal 2,5-hydroxyvitamin D3 that we produce when we synthesize our own vitamin D. It's 2,5-hydroxyvitamin D2. Um, now, this is interesting. It does If you get your vitamin D um, in a supplement from the doctor, the form of... Um, vitamin D in most medicines is actually ergo calciferol. It is known that ergo calciferol, the plant form of vitamin D, is bioactive in humans and it will stop you getting a vitamin D deficiency. Um, so consuming mushrooms is uh, you know, a reasonable um, way of obtaining your vitamin D. Um, the bioavailability is not so good as with vitamin D3 um, and this relates to the fact that there are more steps in the metabolism of 2,5-hydroxyvitamin D3 than there are in the metabolism of 2,5-hydroxyvitamin D2. So in other words, it takes longer for the body to excrete um, the vitamin D3 form of uh, vitamin D. Uh, and because of that, uh, ergo calciferol um, will be excreted more quickly from the body and therefore you need slightly more of it in your diet to be able to maintain the same level of vitamin D. So saying that ergo calciferol and calci uh, cola calciferol are the same is not true. Um, ergo calciferol is slightly less bioavailable. Uh, it produces slightly um, less um, useful vitamin D in your tissues and it's excreted more quickly and you need more of it in order to be able to maintain the same level of vitamin D. But, you know, you can take more of it. It's nothing wrong with ergo calciferol. There is one other thing about ergo calciferol that is quite interesting. Um, if you boost your levels of um, ergo calciferol in your diet, and that increases your plasma levels of 2,5-hydroxyvitamin D2, uh, the active metabolite of ergo calciferol, what actually happens is your cola calciferol levels, your 2,5-hydroxyvitamin D3 levels actually go down. So there is this playoff between the two types of vitamin D. If you take in more vitamin D3 in your diet, the levels of vitamin D, uh, sorry, if you take in more levels of, uh, at higher levels of vitamin D2 in your diet, the levels of vitamin D3 in your blood actually go down and a number of studies have measured this and reported it. Um, is this important? Um, maybe, maybe not. No one really knows. Um, as long as there is you know, adequate vitamin D in your blood, it's likely that it doesn't matter which source it is. Uh, both of these sources of vitamin D can be used uh, and converted into active uh, bioactive metabolites and therefore they can be used by um, it, they can be used by the body for the normal regulatory um, role of vitamin D which is calcium uh, calcium metabolism immune function um, and, 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 and the, the maintenance of uh, calcium absorption and, 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 and proper calcium homeostasis um, but you know it's interesting to note that nonetheless so food sources that are designated plant vitamin D2, um, they may not be quite as good as, um, you know, the animal source, cola calciferol, vitamin D3. Um, but, you know, the long-term implication of this is not fully understood. Now, if we're getting back to mushrooms, uh, mushrooms produce this plant form of, uh, of vitamin uh, D called ergo calciferol. Um, we consume the mushrooms and then we, um, we take in that ergo calciferol. It is bioavailable. It does get into our tissues. What's interesting is a number of studies have, have noted that uh, exposing mushrooms to ultraviolet light, exposing them to the sun, increases this synthesis of ergo calciferol. Um, and there have been a number of studies that have looked at different types of mushrooms and how much ergo calciferol they have in their, uh, their tissues. Um, and there are differences between uh, the various mushrooms. Some mushrooms are better sources of vitamin D. Um, vitamin d2 than others and i what i will do is i'll put a link to a couple of papers that, sh that have measured um, the vitamin d uh, 
uh, in various mushrooms and um, they, you know they're quite interesting there are differences whether this would um, be the same for all mushrooms there was only a very small sample that were measured um, but what one of these studies has actually done is he's actually exposed these mushrooms to uh, vitamin D uh, to um, sunlight and then measured the vitamin D uh, in the mushrooms uh, and what appears to happen is if you expose the cap of the mushroom, the top of the mushroom, uh, to uh, sunlight, you get an increase in the amount of vitamin D synthesized in the mushroom. And this is true if the mushroom is in the ground or if the mushroom has already been uh, picked and is, you know, has been sliced, for example. The top part, the cap of the mushroom, uh, produces, uh, when exposed to sunlight, it produces a, an increase in vitamin D. Um, However, when you expose the gills, which is the part underneath the cap that is normally facing down towards the, uh, the ground, and if you turn a mushroom over, you can see the gills. They look like fish gills. They've got these very thin, fine membranes uh, underneath uh, the cap of the mushroom, and this is normally where the spores are produced, uh, and they're kept under the cap to keep them dry. Uh, and when they get wet, they get washed out of the gills, uh, and then they get uh, th that obviously allows the mushrooms to, uh, as part of their reproductive cycle, um, but the gills, when they're exposed to UV light, actually produce much higher amounts of uh, vitamin D, up to 20 times as much vitamin D as exposing the cap. And there have been a number of studies that looked at uh, exposing mushrooms to ultraviolet light. Uh, and when you pick them, if you slice them, you expose them to ultraviolet light, the vitamin D content does go up. Now, that will depend on how uh, long ago the mushrooms were picked. Obviously, uh, they need to be quite freshly picked because the, the enzymes within mushrooms will start to uh, the metabolic um, you know rate within tissues will start to deteriorate as soon as you pick the mushroom um, wild mushrooms tend to have higher amounts of vitamin d than um, ones that are grown commercially and this very likely relates to the fact that wild mushrooms are exposed at least for some of the day um, usually to sunlight um, those mushrooms that are grown commercially uh, have much less exposure to the ultraviolet A and uh, A and B that is required for this um, conversion um, of um, these plant sterols to um, um, to ergo calciferol. And I say plant sterols they you know they're called plant sterols but really they're you know as I said before um, mushrooms are not it part of the uh, obviously part of the plant kingdom uh, it's just a, a nutritional term that is that, that they have been designated. Um, how much vitamin D can you get from a mushroom? This is obviously what we want to ask. Can we um, can we use mushrooms as a source of vitamin D? Um, the amounts vary between mushrooms that have been measured. Um, in one uh, particular paper, um, the, 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 the amounts that were measured were not insignificant. Um, there was, um, for example, um, one study looked at uh, different mushrooms. They looked at shiitake mushrooms enoki mushrooms, uh, button mushrooms, oyster mushrooms, and abalone mushrooms. And the oyster mushrooms had um, the highest concentrations of vitamin D2, um, and they had um, 45 uh, micrograms per gram of dry weight of mushrooms. Um, so that's not an insignificant amount of vitamin D. Um, a typical vitamin D3 supplement that contained 4,000 IU would be 100 micrograms of vitamin D. So 45 micrograms of vitamin D um, is a reasonable amount. Now bear in mind that's per dry weight, so the mushrooms have been dried. Um, you would get a lot less, um, you know, you get a lot more mushrooms in, in dry weight obviously than wet weight because um, mushrooms are, you know, mostly water. So that, you know, it's, it doesn't, it does appear a lot, but it's, it's not obviously as much as supplements, but it's not an insignificant amount compared with other foods. It's a, you know, it's a reasonable amount of vitamin D. Uh, and the fact that you can increase the, the levels of vitamin D uh, in mushrooms through exposure to UV light um, is, um, it, you know, is interesting. So this conversion of ergo sterol, this plant sterols, uh, fungi sterols to, 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 to vitamin, uh, vitamin D is a very interesting area of active research. And it's, it's something that I haven't really seen covered much by other nutritionists. And, and I think it's worthy of, of, you know, of talking about, which is why I've um, you know why I've, I've talked about it the stalks of mushrooms um, really you know they they can be exposed to UV light as well they still produce uh, vitamin D but but not as much as the as, as the gills uh, or the or the cap a much lower amount so it does depend which part of the mushroom you're eating as well as to how much um, vitamin D you're getting um, and obviously the gills usually are not exposed um, to UV light in wild grown mushrooms so although when you do expose them they're vitamin D content would go up 
uh, they, they're possibly in wild mushrooms not a good source of vitamin D because they just don't have that sunlight exposure so it's usually that it's going to be the cap and the outer the outer layer of the top of the mushroom that is really going to provide uh, most of the vitamin D um, so uh, you know that that's that's quite interesting um, how what are the best conditions for um, producing vitamin D in mushrooms uh, one paper looked at the um, the conditions and came to the conclusion that uh, um, when when the um, the temperature is around 35 which is you know much higher than uh, the room temperature but a very hot day outside uh, and when the water content of the mushroom is about 78 percent so um, uh, you know take that that's probably not for the same for all mushrooms it's probably not the same um, for for all conditions depending on the amount of UV light these things vary but you know when the mushroom is wild wet it's growing and it's warm you tend to get more production of vitamin D so the growing conditions like like all of all of the um, chemicals that are produced by um, in plants and and, and um, fungi as well it really depends on the growing conditions and therefore it's very difficult to actually uh, say how much vitamin D you're going to get um, from mushrooms so that's where I want to that's where I want to go with this really and finish up with is yes vitamin D um, is present in mushrooms and vitamin D uh, and mushrooms could be you know a reasonable source of vitamin D there is good evidence for that particularly if they've been exposed to UV light but the problem is there are too many variables to actually state how much of this vitamin D you're actually going to take in it will depend on the growing conditions it depends on the type of the mushroom it depends on how much UV light the mushrooms have been exposed to um, and, and various other factors that are going to uh, make it very difficult for you to actually know how much vitamin D you've had and this is really why I recommend supplements during the winter um, it vitamin D is one of the only um, nutrients that I think that it is really only possible to know that you're getting adequate levels from if you're taking a supplement there are too many variables in food um, uh, it, it, to be able to estimate how much you're getting if you happen to eat mushrooms all the way through the winter that haven't been exposed to uv light that have been grown in in, in conditions that are not optimal for for, for um, vitamin d production and are also the type of mushrooms that maybe don't contain the right amounts of vitamin d it, you do still run the risk of getting a vitamin d uh, deficiency and this is why i would suggest that most people really still um, require supplements the one food that you could say does provide uh, an adequate amount of vitamin D and you know how much you're getting is your fish liver oils they they are generally quite consistent in the amount of vitamin D they contain and it's why traditionally they've been used as the med as the mainstream medicine uh, against uh, the development of rickets and osteomalacia which are the vitamin D deficiency diseases so I hope that was interesting that's that's my take on the you know on the subject anyway um, as always uh, eat well stay healthy and protect yourself and I will see you soon for another video. Take care.